Good morning. Welcome to Coolidge, Arizona. It's my pleasure to welcome you here today. What we do here today, if we are successful together, will be in the history books someday. Because one of the hardest challenges we're going to have to solve as a species on this planet is how to stop digging up and burning fossil fuels to power our lives. We will be the first OEM that we know of to hit the market with a 300 plus mile zero emission semi truck. Do you remember this video? Or how about this incredible video of the Nikola One electric semi truck in motion? Hmm, that's an interesting like to dislike ratio. Oh, wait, they literally rolled this thing down a hill. It wasn't actually driving whatsoever. Nikola is an interesting company. And by interesting, I mean, wow, what a mess. When I bring up companies on my channel, I generally try to bring up companies that I think have some sort of value or interesting product. I don't see a lot of point in bringing up companies that have no redeeming qualities whatsoever, unless they're heavily discussed, they're really hot, and I think there are glaring issues with them. Nikola was definitely one of those companies where I was probably more bearish on that company than any other company I've discussed on my channel before. And as I said, generally, I might have issues with the company, I might have concerns about how they're going to progress in the future and over the long term, but I'm not trying to talk about companies that I think are completely worthless. In general, you know, I think almost all the companies I've covered had some redeeming qualities. But my video on Nikola was probably the harshest I've ever done. And in this one, I'm going to get a bit more harsh. Because there is just a lot about this company that I think is really horrific. And I wouldn't recommend that the average retail investor invest in them. I think there are a lot better options, especially if you want to get into the more risky asset class. Recently, you might have seen that the Nikola GM deal did not pan out as they expected. Originally, GM was going to take a massive equity stake in Nikola, more than 20%, which would sort of put Nikola on the line for GM. You know, it's really part of their umbrella. The original deal was very ridiculous, actually. Nikola would be paying them billions and billions of dollars to design and basically do all the work for them, and they would be handing over tons and tons of stock there really wasn't anything beneficial in it for Nikola other than getting a partner to do stuff for them at pretty extraordinary prices too. And a lot of that involved things like the Nikola Badger pickup truck and all these other fuel cell systems and battery cell systems. It was a pretty massive deal and it raised a red flag for a lot of people saying, holy cow, why is this company surrendering so many assets and money? Like, this really <laughs> screws over Nikola, but they were happy to sign it. This short-selling firm, Hindenburg Research, released an article about Nikola. And they made some pretty extraordinary claims, talking about the massive amount of lies and misrepresentation that the company had participated in, and the fact that it did things like rolling a pickup truck down a hill, saying that it's in motion and then proceeding to edit the video so it doesn't look like a hill. GM then really pulled back and relaxed. They talked about this deal with Nikola a lot more, and they weren't confirming anything. And as I understand, the way the deal was set out was that they had up to a certain period of time to make a decision, and they could pull out past that date. However, they were also free to renegotiate the deal because it wasn't finalized yet. And this whole short seller report really changed how GM viewed the company. Especially because Nikola never really refuted the things in the report. I mean, they responded to a lot of these points, but they didn't outright call them wrong or incorrect. And the DOJ is actually taking a pretty firm look at Nikola. They've been under investigation for a little while now. There's obviously been a lot of concerns about the company and pretty dramatic statements made about it. And this was a company that I actually made a video on a while ago, back in July 15th, when they were trading at around $50 or more. And in this video, I point out a lot of incredibly strange things about the company, even way back then. 
the fact that they were taking reservations with zero dollars down so you could go and reserve 200 semi trucks if you really wanted to without any money whatsoever and then they would proceed to say that they had billions of dollars in potential sales but then they changed that they changed tons of stuff constantly uh, the fact that the company they were merging with was very strange and at this 20 billion dollar evaluation was it really that reasonable to do a reverse merger setup it was a lot of strange things with this company it was weird i also went into detail how they were making these ridiculous promises for being super effective in the battery space and hydrogen space power sports all of this stuff the company had not made or sold anything they didn't have any factories they had absolutely nothing and they were making a lot of these outrageous claims you know that they were going to have these extreme superiority in all these technologies it was incredibly weird and then i got into a lot of things about trevor milton and his whole history which again was very strange the man really hadn't done anything of note you know there were a couple companies he was related to that didn't really do anything and his citation for being a billionaire was actually based on the fact that he owned a bunch of nikola stock and the ip well they did a reverse merger he had tons of nikola stock that was his citation for being a billionaire so it wasn't like elon musk who had been in successful ventures like paypal or other companies like that it was just this man out of nowhere who became a billionaire off the promise of this one stock. And this was a huge company valued higher than Subaru, Nissan, Neo, Renault. Um, it was staggering. It, really staggering. Now, Trevor Milton is gone um, amid complaints about unethical behavior. I won't get into this. Um, the man's gone now. I'll let this play out in court, and I won't say anything else about this, but he was a strange guy. His history was strange. And immediately after he became a billionaire off Nikola stock, he decided to drop millions and millions of dollars on this massive, beautiful Utah ranch. This was actually the most expensive home ever sold in Utah's history. It was huge, like giant, really staggering, multi-million dollar, the most expensive piece of residential property ever sold in Utah. And it's just really staggering that so many companies and people bought into this company when there was a lot strange about it. They were making extraordinary claims, and most of the time when Trevor would get up and talk, he talked about partnerships. You know, he really never convinced me, at least, that the company had anything particularly powerful or useful, you know? It was always about having someone else do something. Which is why when GM said, in this new revised deal, yeah, we'll sell you components, but we're not going to be doing all this work for the Nikola Badger, we're not taking equity in the company. Well, if you notice, um, the Badger isn't on the website anymore. Well, the page is still there, but you can't look it up from the main site anymore. Uh, again ridiculous claims and this was all really cgi renders they didn't even have a prototype of this vehicle it wasn't real and they hadn't designed anything they didn't really have anything technical on it they wanted gm to make it for them and this new deal by gm is definitely kind of a ball buster since they're not going to be doing any work for the company but they're willing to sell them their batteries, their fuel cell technology, they're willing to work with them and sell them stuff, but they're not taking a stake in the company. And I think it says a lot when GM is willing to sell all of these components to Nikola, but Nikola isn't even willing to commit to assembling stuff. Why take pre-orders for this? Why take thousands and thousands of dollars from people for something put on hold indefinitely? If it was really that much of a distraction, why put it out to the public? And that's not the only thing that has evaporated. There's also this entire power sports section that Nikola had that was kind of insane. I mean, you know, this was a company that just became public. Did have, they did not have any factories. They didn't have anything, really. And they were putting out all of these products. They had an entire power sports section, you know, multiple UTVs, watercraft. It was kind of ridiculous <laughs> way back in 2019. Yeah, this would have been cool, right? 
the Nikola wave. And this was something I discussed in my old video. If you're really interested in me doing a dive into Trevor Milton and some of the early things that made me bearish about the stock when it was trading at $50 and $20 billion market cap that made me think this is insane, uh, I'll have a link in the description if you really want to watch and go through that old news now. Nikola is in the spotlight again, not just because they dropped tons off how the General Motors deal panned out, but because there is a lockup date on insider trading for the stock. Basically, there's 161 million Nikola shares that are held by insiders that have been locked up, and that lockup will expire on December 1st. Now, this lockup has actually been extended for tons of companies involved with Nikola through April 30th, 2021. And this is one thing to keep in mind. Whenever you're taking a short position on a company, you have to realize it has to be over the long term. If you're buying puts on a company, you probably want them over the course of a year or more. It takes a while for a house of cards to fall. Even when we look at complete and utter scam companies like Theranos, it took a while for that whole charade to completely collapse. However, Trevor Milton actually holds 96.1 million of those shares, and he can dump them on December 1st if he wants to. He's free to sell however many he wishes, even though lockup has been extended for other shares. Now, will he dump them on December 1st? Mm, it seems like Trevor really did a lot to try to keep the stock price up. You know, they were aggressive on maintaining that stock price and kind of almost being predatorial for Robinhood investors, right? Not really the big retail investors. They wanted the smaller crowd. They wanted a lot of that investment money. The thing is, the future for this company is not looking too bright. You know, they're saying they'll have prototypes way out in years and years, which is insane because once you get a prototype, it takes years after that just to get a product being made in a factory. So it is possible he could just dump all of those shares, make a lot of money, and try to get out. But he is good friends with the current CEO. They've been working together for a while doing various interesting activities. So maybe they'll try to hold things until an equity pump. It's really hard to say. We don't know for sure. I wouldn't be surprised if the share price completely collapses on December 1st, but over the long term, I have no faith in this company, really. I think there's way too many issues they're facing. They've never really had any compelling technologies. And the big thing is, hydrogen tech probably doesn't make that much sense for road vehicles. I think that they're extremely silly. Um, um, so the, and the people have published, there's multiple sort of uh, rebuttals of it, of it online. Um, I mean, the, it, it's just very difficult to, to make hydrogen and store it and use it in a car. Um, it, it, uh, hydrogen is an energy storage mechanism. It's not a source of energy. Um, so you have to get that hydrogen from somewhere. If you get that hydrogen from, from water, so you're splitting uh, H2O, uh, the, the electrolysis is extremely inefficient as an energy process. Um, so, um, and, and like you know, hydrogen fuel, the, the best case hydrogen fuel cell doesn't win against the current case uh, batteries. So then obviously it's, it's, it doesn't make sense. That, that will become apparent in the next few years. There's no, need, no reason for us to have this debate. I've said, uh, you know, my, my piece on this, it will be super obvious as time goes by. Um, I don't know what we're saying. So. And this isn't exactly an edgy or way out there opinion. Elon Musk, years and years ago, before Tesla was insanely huge, said that hydrogen fuel cells were mind-bogglingly stupid. Now, specifically, he wasn't talking about ships or anything like that. He was talking about vehicles that would transverse on American roads, like trucks, cars, things like that. And when we look at disruptive companies, companies that came into the automotive space and have grown insanely, have completed tons and tons of different actions. Tesla has really accomplished a lot, and they are poised to become one of the most powerful auto manufacturers and energy companies in the U.S., in the world, really. 
and they did it all with batteries. They really did not focus anything on hydrogen, and their CEO dismissed them as stupid. They didn't make any sense to him. So that's not the technology he pursued, and he became successful without that. Now, can there be disruptive hydrogen companies? It's definitely possible, but there haven't been any so far. Nikola has not inspired any faith in me. I don't see any companies on the horizon that are going to be taking over the semi-truck space, the passenger car space with hydrogen. Although this is sort of a discussion for a separate video. There's a lot that goes into it, and there's obviously vehicles like the Toyota Mirai and other things like that, and there's tons of nuance with those and how some you can only lease others, or there's a lot going on with it. So I'll save that for another video, but really the point I'm trying to make is I'm not particularly bullish on Nikola. I think their fundamental technology and goals are really not that great. Even in a successful hydrogen future, they've failed to mass-produce hydrogen vehicles. They've failed to mass-produce hydrogen. And they've failed to really be a reasonable, trustable company. If you're interested in getting into the market and using self-directed trading, a fantastic way to start is with Webull. If you sign up now, you can get three free stocks. I have a referral link in the description. And again, if you sign up, you can get a free stock valued between $2.5 to $250. And then you'll receive two other free stocks valued between eight and $1,600 if you deposit $100 or more. There are no fees or anything with depositing money. You just get your stocks. If you're interested and want access to a fantastic trading desktop, mobile, and web application, just use the link in the description below.